The Zen Doctor with Dr. Stephen Simpson. Hi, thanks for finding our podcast. My name is Dr. Steve Simpson, also known as the Zen Doctor. And we're going to be exploring lots of things to do with the mind, how we can find a better mindset, and how we can attract more luck into our lives. Right now, I'm uh, in quite a well-kept secret in London's financial district, which is known as Canary Wharf. There's a lovely little garden here, which is beautifully looked after in West Ferry Circus. So this is a place where I come to think and to meditate because finding somewhere quiet in London, even in lockdown, uh, can be a bit of a stretch. Today we're going to be talking about a huge mistake our ancestors made about 50,000 years ago or maybe even a bit less than that. And it's a mistake that we are still paying a huge price for every single day. And uh, the good news is, is that there is a kind of a vaccine for it. And I'm going to try and guide you along the way. So my coffee break's over now. Uh, I'm, I'm attracting some bird life here, as you can probably hear. And it's back to the studio. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens on the day. Bye for now. I often get asked this question, how can I find the Zen state of mind that you talk about so much? My answer is always the same. Choose any activity that totally absorbs your concentration to the exclusion of outside distractions. This is the Zen state of mind. Many people also call this being in the zone. One of the activities I choose is writing. If you plan to write a book, I don't recommend it. It's quite stressful, the hours are long, and the pay for most authors is very low. Despite this, there's also a lot of pleasure. Our default state is to be creative and curious, and writing is definitely one form of creation. It can become an obsessive pleasure, as can all forms of creativity, not least because as soon as a book is written, it no longer accurately reflects your current thinking, which is why new books are written new sculptures are crafted, and new music composed. If this has not put you off, uh, find somewhere nice to write, because it will help your creative juices to flow even more. I've written books in Brazil, Portugal, Australia, and England. Isolation is the common factor. However, life being what it is, there's always going to be at least one insensitive soul who spoils my day by asking, how many words have I written? The last book I wrote was The Psychoic Revolution. Not surprisingly, several people have asked me to explain the title. To the best of my knowledge, the word psychoic did not previously exist, although I'm well aware that nothing is ever unique, so um, apologies to anybody else who might have used this word before I did. I chose this word because I believe it to be the sweet spot of peak performance that makes people lucky and lives somewhere between the psychotic and the psychic states of mind. I have a strong gut feeling that this sweet spot will have a lot to do with how lucky we can get. I'll explain exactly what these words mean later today or in a future episode. First, the history lesson to introduce our biggest mistake ever, one that we still pay a heavy price for. I'll keep it short and hopefully sweet. People like you and me have been shambling around this planet for about 10 million years and looked very different then to how we look now. 10 million years in evolutionary terms is just a blink of the eye, and yet we were fast learners. During that time, we've learned how to walk on two legs, use stone tools, make fires, cook food, and eliminate most of our competition, including our close relatives, the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals disappeared about 30,000 years ago, soon after the humans did something very stupid. The extinction of the Neanderthals at this time and our stupid mistake may not be a coincidence. Our stupid mistake was that we'd learned how to talk. For over 9 million years, we had managed very well without talk. Strangely enough, 
we apparently communicated very effectively. It was much easier then because we lived in very small social groups, probably only one or two or a few families living together. We soon learned to interpret the meaning of different grunting sounds and we certainly understood the ear twisting and the hair pulling that often went with the grunts. Occasionally we would bump into a stranger on the forest trail who would not understand our grunts. So we would kill him before he killed us. Men generally kill more people than women. During our history before speech, we survived every threat that nature put in our way. In other words, we were lucky. The reason why learning to talk was such a big mistake is that when we learn a new skill, we usually lose an old one that we had previously relied upon. A modern example would be GPS. It's a wonderful invention that allows us to navigate the world to an accuracy of centimeters, as long as it keeps working. Because when it fails, we are lost in more ways than one because we've lost our innate power of knowing where we are and how to get to where we want to go. The skill we largely lost when we learned to talk was that of non-verbal communication. We were experts at interpreting body language, reading emotions and pattern recognition. We knew many things intuitively and we acted on our instincts. In other words, we were psychic or something close to it. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, part of the definition of a psychic is a person who appears to have powers of telepathy. The problem we made for ourselves when we learned to talk is that language is ambiguous and that words are only an approximation of our thoughts. Our attention span was already starting to become shorter and through the years it would continue to shorten and is probably now shorter than ever before in history. As a result, our conversations would also need to be much shorter. Because our thoughts are so abstract, we struggle to find the right words to describe them. Therefore, these thoughts necessarily become generalized with much content deleted. What is left is distorted by our own personal bias with the result that very little truth remains. No wonder we get so confused. These natural distortions make it almost impossible for us to separate fact from fiction. We've lost our psychic abilities and are now developing psychotic tendencies. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, psychosis is a severe mental disorder in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. I certainly do not wish to trivialise a serious and very distressing mental health condition, but I just wonder how much this definition applies to all of us. Psychosis is a spectrum, and my conclusion is that we all suffer mildly from a permanent and probably incurable loss of contact with reality. As a result of these delusions, we've lost the ability to recognise our intuition, which is our psychic power, and as I mentioned a moment ago, the source of luck. In the next episode, we'll dig around and see if we can find the source of luck again. I have a feeling that we will, or at least we'll come a lot closer to it. This is enough for today. In the next episode, I'll tell you a story. Throughout history, stories have been used to convey news and manipulate emotions. Stories have also been used to describe complex ideas in a metaphorical way that makes it easier for us to resonate with. In the meantime, stay well and spend some time indulging in your favourite Zen activity. May the flow go with you. Goodbye for now. If you have enjoyed The Zen Doctor with Dr. Stephen Simpson, then why not hit the subscribe button? The music, The Soul of the Shaman, was specially composed for the Zen Doctor. To find out more, go to drstephensimpson.com.